Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I'm going to talk about pod disruption budget. So pod disruption budget is basically a Kubernetes uh, object or a Kubernetes feature, you can say, which prevents uh, the number of, or basically which limits the number of pod of a replicated application, uh, which goes down simultaneously to a certain number, right? So suppose, I mean, I'll talk about it with an example. Suppose you have an application which runs say five pods, right? Five, so it's a part of deployment and it runs five pods and you are performing some voluntary disruption. So, so there are two kinds of disruption in Kubernetes, voluntary and involuntary. So voluntary disruptions include things like cluster upgrades where your nodes, you take out one node at a time and upgrade it, right? Or it can be uh, some user performed action like deleting a pod, right? So these, these include basically uh, as a part of voluntary disruption. Involuntary disruption can be kernel panic, right? Or a node just deletes out of your cluster with some uh, cloud related issues, right? So those are involuntary disruptions. So PDB only applies to voluntary disruption and it prevents uh, your application pods uh, or basically limits your application pods to not go down simul simultaneously and it ensures that there are certain number of pods which are always running for your application, right? So PDP, uh, in basically you have two things in PDP. You can either set a minimum available number of pods that you want or maximum unavailable number of pods that you want, right? So if my application is running five pods and if I set minimum available three, so no matter what voluntary disruption I perform, there will always be three pods running, right? And if I set maximum unavailable to three, so no matter what voluntary disruption I'm performing, the maximum number of pods that would be unavailable would be three, right? With that theory uh, aside, let's get into the practical. So I'm going to quickly create a deployment uh, and basically with few replicas. So let me do that. So I'll create a deployment called my app and I'm going to scale it to five replicas. And if I check kubectl get pods. So, well, that was the dis disruption from my daughter getting back. So we can see that there are three pods which run on node one, right? So now I'm going to create a pod disruption budget object. Uh, so let me just copy uh, the command which I already have. So you can see that I'm defining an object of kind pod disruption budget and that's the name and I'm specifying the property minimum and minimum available. So I want that any point of time there should be three pods always running and then I'm setting up a selector which basically matches with my deployment uh, selector, right? So let's hit enter and pod disruption budget is created. kubectl get pdb. So you can see uh, allowed disruption to min, unavail min available is three, All right? So now to simulate a voluntary disruption, uh, what we can do is we can do something like uh, kubectl drain and I think node zero one had three pods. So we are going to drain that pod, that node. And I'm going to ignore the daemon sets and delete any empty directory right and let's hit enter and let it complete the eviction and then I'll talk okay so eviction is complete but you see that when it was evicting this particular pod it threw an error that it cannot evict because it would violate the pods disruption budget so first thing first so eviction is a serial process right so Kubernetes does not or is not going to evict all your pods parallelly. It is going to do it one at a time. So that's why when it can see it points out that evicting this pod, but when it got to a pod of where, I mean, when it got to the third pod, it just threw an error because in the first node, we had two pods running, right? So it evicted say pod this, right? And then when it got to another pod where we actually didn't have, uh, 
so let's understand it in this way so i thought i just i was just making it confusing so let me try to make it simpler so we had five pods right and our pod disruption budget uh, said that we should always have three pods running so two pods are running on a control plane node right when we drained this node the first pod got evicted right so then the total number of pods which we had running is four which is not affecting or not breaching our pod disruption budget so that's why it got evicted when it came to the second pod, uh, when we evict this pod, then we have total number of pods running is three. So we are fine with that, right? But when it came to the third pod, uh, our pod disruption budget got breached, right? And that's when it threw the error that it cannot evict this pod. But since we have a deployment and we have specified the number of pods or the number of replicas, which is five, so the deployment will keep trying to basically scale the, uh, that application to that specific number of pods. So it will try to maintain five pods at any given, uh, given point of time, right? So what happens in that case is that because uh, the node draining keeps trying to evict the pod, it will keep trying to evict the pod. So once those pods come up, right, on the other node, then the breach, then then when it tries to evict this, this pod, the 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 breach is not basically happens, right? The pod disruption budget is not breached. And that's why this node is drained. So since our cluster has all the resources to basically handle all the five pods on one node, that's why this node is drained. But suppose if you have a cluster where you don't have enough resources and you perform the, the node drain, right? And there is not enough resources on the other nodes to handle the number of pods, then this node draining activity will actually be failed right this will not be completed in this case it got completed because our other node had enough resources so if i do kubectl get pods hyphen o wide so you would see all the pods are now running on control plane node right because the control plane node had enough resources to basically host all these pods if control plane uh, node did not have enough resources we would have not been able to drain this node the pod disruption budget would not have allowed it i mean the error which we saw here right uh, here it would have pay, failed here the here only right the this process would not have completed but since the deployment was trying to launch the pod so see there are two things happening uh, kubernetes is trying to evict the pod the node drain activity is trying to evict the pod continuously and then there is deployment which is trying to maintain five replicas of the of the application right so as soon as it evicted the first uh, pod the deployment would have seen okay now i only have four replicas running so i have to basically match to five right because that's the number of replicas i want to run so that's why it would have spun up another replica on control plane node <laughs> right and then similarly, I mean, in the same, this would have continued uh, when it got to, and probably the deployment spinning up the pod was not fast enough. That's why we actually saw this error. But if it would have been really quick, right, the deployment would have started rolling out uh, the pods pretty quickly. Probably we might not even have seen this error because then our number of uh, pods would have always been greater than three and we would have not breached uh, our pod disruption budget. So in that case, we probably would not have seen the error, but since it was not as fast uh, as as we thought or as we wanted, that's why we saw this error. But again, on the second try, when the drain second tried to basically, when the eviction happens, it keeps trying to evict the pod, right? If it fails or it gets any error, it basically retries, right? So on the second try, it was actually able to evict the pod, right? You can see evict the pod. So that's why it just keeps trying to evict the pod. And by the time uh, the deployment has launched another pod on the other node, that's why we were not in breach of our pod disruption budget. And that's why uh, the, made got, the node got drained, right? So when I can understand it's, it's a little confusing because there are two things at play. First is the deployment trying to maintain five replicas. And then there is uh, node uh, draining which is trying to evict the pod continuously and then there is pod disruption budget which is actually not allowing more than three pods to go down right or basically which is basically not allowing the number of replicas to be less than three at any given point of time so there are three actually three things at play here right Ooh, okay i think that's that's all i wanted to cover for this video uh, 
if you have any question related to pot disruption budget i know my explanation was not good enough in this video because this concept is little twisted because i mean i have not even talked about things like uh, topology spread constraint which can actually hamper your pod uh, uh, basically pod disruption or node disruption right or voluntary disruption so we're not going to those details but yeah i think if you have any questions just put it in the comments and i'll be happy to help you with that probably with much clearer uh, discussion or much clearer answer right okay so i hope this is it for this video i hope you guys like this video please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching